successfully installed an app called WinUSB, which will allow you to make It'll a live USB. Basically, to pick um, a, your username. So this is a really nice way to get a map-like operating system for free. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lulu here with an updated version of my Ubuntu 14.04 basic usage tutorial and review. Now the reason I'm making this video is because I found out that the last one I had had some inaccurate information in it and it was also very old. So without further ado, here's my tutorial. Please note though that this tutorial is meant for absolute beginners so if you're an experienced Linux user this isn't for you and then at the end I'm going to be doing a short review it's not like this full thing is a review. Um, basically once you've um, installed Ubuntu and you first log in this is your login screen on the top right here you have some options power, time, volume, language, um, internet and accessibility options. Um, on the left here you have all your user accounts. You can disable this guest session if you want and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, to log in you just type in your password and hit enter. Ignore that error on the right. Uh, and once you've logged in you will go to the Ubuntu guest top and this is what it looks like. Um, once again on the top right you have some more options in here. You have your system settings, Ubuntu help and about this computer as well as switching accounts. Um, on the left here you have this thing that looks like a dock. Um, and this is basically where you're going to launch most of your applications. On the top left here you have what's called the Dash Home and this is basically equivalent to a start button that you would have on Windows. You can search for applications up here and they'll come up. Um, your most used, it's either your most used or all, I don't remember, but it will show up here and then you can also filter your results down here and here and when you search for um, things it'll also search the web if you want. Moving on down, because these are the most important applications, um, this is your files browser. It's basically the equivalent of Windows Explorer. Um, it takes you to this home folder, which is where all your documents, downloads, videos, music um, is stored. And then most of your applications get installed to uh, the computer here, which is where all your system files are. These are just all the things in the home folder. And then these are all your drives and devices. As you can see, I have a CD in right now. And here is network and server, so I can connect to whatever network I wanted to connect. It's Windows network for my Windows computer. Um, moving on down, this is just Firefox web browser, but I am going to show you some important stuff with Windows quickly. Uh, once Firefox loads. Alright, so the way the Windows work in Ubuntu is, first of all, the X, minimize, and maximize buttons are on the left, not the right. And then minimizing will take it to the dock, and you can see it's minimized because of the arrow and it's highlighted. You can click it, it will redo that. You can maximize it either by clicking the maximize button or by dragging it to the top of the screen. You can also snap it to the left and the right of the screen and have sort of a split screen with another window. When you do um, have a window like this, all the options will, um, the minimize, maximize, and close will um, be hidden. Move your mouse here, and it'll be on the top left here. When you move your window down, um, the options by default stay up here, but you can um, set it to move down to this window. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Moving on down, LibreOffice Writer, Calc, and Impress are equivalent to Microsoft Office Word, uh, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now, the Ubuntu Software Center is basically where you can get most of your Ubuntu apps. You can install apps directly from the internet, but this is basically like an app store. Um, you can browse applications, and if you find one you like, you can click on it, and 99.9% .9 of the applications in the store are free, and then you just hit install, and it will install it to this dock. I'll show you how to add and remove things from this dock in a minute. This, I don't know why they have this on the dock, but it just takes you to Amazon. And then the most important, excuse me, the most important probably is your system settings. Now, if you click on this, um, this is where um, all the customization comes in. If you go to appearance, you can change your wallpaper to whatever you want. And the theme of the dock will also change with that. Um, sure, that looks nice. And then there's different themes. The high contrast and radiance don't look too nice. I recommend sticking with ambience. And then this just, as you can see on the left, changes the size of my 
um, launch your icons. Now, if I go to behavior, this is what I was talking about. As you can see, like this help menu is up here. If I change this to the window title bar, now it's going to be here. And then you can auto hide the launcher, which will make it hide, and then you reveal it by putting your mouse there. Uh, workspaces is. Let me show you this first. Add show desktop. Basically, you click on it. It minimizes everything to the dock, so you free up some space. Workspaces is basically multiple desktops, kind of what they're doing with Windows 10. You can have one desktop with Windows open here. You can switch to another desktop and have completely different applications open. And you can move applications between desktops. And you can set how many um, workspaces you want with something called Compiz, which I will show you in a minute. All right, uh, moving on in the settings. Brightness and lock is just literally your brightness and lock settings. Language support. Online accounts lets you hook up things like Google, Facebook, um, stuff like that. But it's not really that useful at the moment. Security and privacy, text entry, those aren't um, so important. This is all your hardware stuff. Um, the imp most important thing is printers because a lot of people wonder about printers in Ubuntu. And I actually think that the support for printers has gotten really good lately. Um, most of the companies you can um, either have Linux drivers online, and if not, especially if you have a network printer, um, you can you can normally just find it by searching through here, typing the IP. Sometimes you can even just tip find without typing the IP, and it'll come up. It's not going to come up for me because I don't have a printer connected um, to this computer right now. Um, mouse and touchpad let you um, you can. Yeah, just mess with this yourself. Um, you can actually, I forget how, you can change the double click to be a single click, so you can single click to open applications. Most of the stuff in Ubuntu is already single click, as you can see, but folders and stuff are still double click. Oh, I think, yeah, the options here, you go to preference, and you can single click to open items. Um, moving on down. D backups are not that important in Ubuntu. I mean, it's a very stable operating system, so you shouldn't need to. Details gives you information about your computer. Um, software and updates is important. Uh, this is basically leave all of this, unless you know what you're doing in your experience, leave all of this checked and leave this how it is. Now, this um you can mess with if you want to always have the latest version of ubuntu change this to any new version if you're kind of fine with the version you want and you only want like a new version every five years when they've done significant stuff just do the long-term support and if you never want to update set it to never then all of this is once again stuff you can mess with um at your own will and yeah it's probably going to take a minute for me to close Alright, that's closed. Um, next time and date just lets you mess with the clock. Uh, oh, that's I I didn't really know what that is. That's just accessibility options. User accounts. Um, is actually not where you can um disable the guest account. This is basically where you can add and remove accounts and change the picture and stuff like that. Um, you can set password, administrator, automatic login, stuff like that. And that about covers settings. Now I'm going to show you how to disable guest accounts. And as you can see, it's bugging me because I have an update available. And I'm pretty sure it might have froze. But anyway, I'm going to show you now how to um, disable the guest account. All right, to remove the guest account is actually quite simple. I've pulled up the command here. What you want to do is on your desktop, do Control alt t t excuse me. And that's going to bring up terminal. If you can't bring it up that way, you can always search for it here. Um, and then basically what you want to type is... Uh, here we go. sudo nano slash user slash share slash light dm slash light dm dot conf dot d slash 50 dash ubuntu dot conf like that and then what you want to do is hit enter and it's going to ask for your password just put your password in and you're going to come up to something that looks like this and what you want to do is type allow 
make sure I'm getting this right. Allow dash guest equals false with no spaces equals false. And then what you want to do is type control, hit control X, and then you want to hit Y, and then you want to hit enter, and now guest account is will be disabled once you restart. Um, if you right click on the desktop, you can have icons on your desktop and documents on your desktop, just like you would in Windows or Mac. You can change the desktop background and launch settings quickly by going there. And you can also add and remove things from the dock. You can either do it by right clicking and unlocking from launcher and then when you have an app open right clicking and hitting lock to launcher or on occasion um for some reason it only works with certain apps but sometimes you can cl just click and drag things or throw them oops, or just get ri get rid of them like oh no maybe you can't all right oh yeah you can okay did I get rid of that? Yep, I did. Um, with some applications, it is a bit difficult to get these on. As um, like Minecraft, for example, it's difficult to pin to the launcher, and there's a certain way you have to do it. And there's tutorials online and stuff. But for the most part, that is basically it for Ubuntu. I'm pretty sure I got through all of that, like a fifth of the time. I got through it in my other video. Um, basically. That's what I forgot. I forgot to show you how to install Windows programs here. That's why it was so short. Um, to install Windows programs, what you want to do, and I didn't show you how to install applications from web. Oh, wow. There's a hole in my brain. I apologize. Um, to install, first of all, to install programs from the internet, for example, say I wanted to install VirtualBox to Ubuntu. I would search VirtualBox, and this is an application that by default is compatible with Linux. You would want to either install 32-bit or 64-bit. When you click on that, it's going to download as a .deb. You can open a .deb with the software center and install it from there. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you have an application that by default isn't compatible with Windows, for example, I don't know, Office, um, nah, uh, SketchUp. Google SketchUp. You can download that. And it's, as you can see, only available for. You know, what's a, what's a free random Windows program? Notepad. Sure. Now, Notepad is a Windows program. And if I go to download it, it's going to download as an EXE, I believe. And it's not going to be op openable. So what you want to do is save this file. And now you can exit out of this. And now you want to launch the software center. And then you want to find an app called Wine. Um, now this app is called Wine Windows Program Loader. This is the one you want and you want to go ahead and install this app now basically what this does is allows Ubuntu to open an exe file so say I installed that I'm not going to do it because it takes forever if I were to double click on this now it would launch the notepad you know what I will I'm, I'm not excuse me I'm not going to be lazy I'm going to install wine and show you myself I will be right back as you can see wine is a very big program it's 185 megabytes now unfortunately not all programs work with wine there are a few programs such as Office 365 that don't. However, you can't, excuse me, there is a way to run them. I have actually uploaded a video on how to upload them and I'll have an annotation to it here. But um, yeah, this is the easiest way and I'd say 90% of applications will work using this. And then the 10% that won't, 9% of those will work with my other method. method then one percent of them just won't work um so this is going to install quickly and i guess while this is installing i could do my ubuntu review so anyway as i was saying um ubuntu i really like it a lot more than i guess when it first came out i mean 
now Ubuntu is more user friendly. You have driver support, to, um, you have printer support. You can run most Windows programs, and I feel like it's just a very good, stable, solid, user friendly operating system. And if you want a free alternative to Windows, that's another big thing. Ubuntu is a hundred percent free, and there's not even ads or anything when you're in the operating system. So yeah, if you're looking for like a good free um, user-friendly operating system, I 100% recommend Ubuntu. I am going to be doing some more operating system reviews in the future. Um, probably do Linux Mint or something next. I'm not going to be doing the usage tutorial for all of my videos. This is kind of a one-off thing, but this is almost installed. I'm going to have to pause the video because this is lagging the crap out of my computer. Um, I could show you one thing quickly. If a window ever freezes, which is extremely rare in Ubuntu, but I mean it does happen, it is an operating system. What you can do is say this window froze, um, do Control Alt T, then you want to type X killed. And then you want to hit enter. And then your mouse is going to turn into an X, and you can click on the window you want to destroy. And that'll get rid of it like that. So I might pause the video till this is done installing because it's eating a lot of my computer's resources and I'll be right back. Alright so Wine has finally installed and now basically I'm going to be able to demonstrate. It even recognizes the icon now and if I right click on this it's, see it's going to open with Wine and if I double click on this it should open and because this is the first time I'm using Wine it might take a while. Um, there is another alternative to one called Play on Linux, which is basically the same software but made for gamers. So, as this loads, I will pause the video. Alright, so this is loaded, and as you can see, it recognizes it. It's in English. And if I go next, it even looks kind of like Windows. I agree. Next, next. Create shortcut on desktop, install. And as you can see, it is installing Notepad++, a Windows program entirely to Ubuntu. And as you can see, it has made an icon on the desktop. And if I double click on that, hey, it runs. And I can type stuff. And it doesn't lag. It's seamless, just as I would in Windows. So I guess that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you need any help, leave a question in the comment, and I will see you guys next time. Adios.